Hello everyone, my name is Krishna Jevons and my presentation today is going to be on the pathophysiology of type 1 diabetes as well as modern medicine's answer to this pathology, uh, the artificial pancreas. Today's presentation objectives will cover uh, type 1 diabetes uh, mellitus and its symptoms as well as the insulin protein, a healthy pancreas functionality, uh, the, and the pathophysiology of type 1 diabetes, and then uh, the artificial pancreas. So, uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but uh, type 1 diabetes mellitus is characterized as a inability of the pancreas pr to uh, produce insulin. So some common symptoms of this um, pathology is high blood sugar, um, frequent urination, frequent thirst, uh, as well as some sensory deprivation, as well as uh, like numbness, blurred vision, and fatigue. So insulin protein. It's a pancreatic peptide hormone secreted by beta cells of the islets of Langerhans in your uh, pancreas, which is essential in the metabolism of carbohydrates and the regulation of glucose level. So essentially insulin's function keeps your blood sugar uh, level from getting too high or too low. Insulin allows the cells to absorb that glucose, which is present in the blood. The glucose serves as energy to these cells, or it can be converted into fat and energy if it's not needed. Uh, insulin also affects other metabolic processes, such as the breakdown in fat and protein, uh, but that's not necessary for this lecture. So we have to look at what a healthy pancreas, um, work, how it works, and a healthy pancreas completes these functions. Um, it has... It, Alpha cells, which secrete glucagon, which is the antithesis to insulin. Uh, we have beta cells, which secrete that insulin. Um, we're going to want to focus on that uh, that hormone there. It's going to be a, a, a large, important player in the pathology of type 1 diabetes. Uh, then we can see that the pancreas also functions in the exocrine gland. Exocrine gland. Um, yeah, so the pancreas produces enzymatic secretions to break down food. The structure uh, where secretion is called is the islet of the cell. You can see these islets over here. So healthy pancreas. We have to learn about the uh, beta cell insulin production pathway of a healthy pancreas in order to understand what when something goes wrong. So, first we see that there is glucose that is detected in the blood by this GLUT2 monitor. It's actually a glucose transporter. So it trans uh, detects the glucose and it makes a conformational change, which allows the glucose to be released inside the cellular matrix. So a glucokinase is something that phosphorylates the um, glucose molecule. And it then goes under um, glycolysis, or the Krebs cycle, or um, you know uh, the, the production towards ATP. This ATP is then um, activated on an ATP-sensitive potassium channel, and these charges that the potassiums uh, carry is positive, so that causes the depolarization of the cell. With that depolarization, that triggers a voltage-gated calcium channel to open up. Uh, intake calcium and then it's going to go th to these um, vesicle transports in these buds and they come out and they uh, contain insulin and so they are released into the bud stream to regulate um, glucose uptake. So just a quick recap, uh, glucose is detected by a receptor on the B cell, cellular respiration produces ATP which then triggers the depolarization of the cell and leads to the release of insulin. The pathophysiology of type 1 diabetes. The diabetic's immune system does not allow this to happen. So the immune system of a type 1 diabetic recognizes these cells as foreign and actually destroys them. T cells or T lymphocytes phagocytize the beta cell which is, uh, leads to the cessation of insulin pr uh, production. The um, autoimmune system, so the self, it's coming from the self now, is the destruction of insulin-producing pancreatic beta cells. This is referred to as induced B-cell autoimmunity. This process is marked by the development of islet-reactive autoantibodies, which pretends 
the development of autoreactive T cells capable of destroying those beta cells, which is, uh, results in a progressive and predictable loss in uh, insulin secretory function. Now the beta cell function decreases over time, leading to overt diabetes, which is expressed diabetes. So what is the answer in medicine for this problem? Um, now, just recently introduced by the FDA, uh, approved by the FDA in America, uh, is this artificial pancreas. So how do we work to solve this? So we have this thing called an insulin pump, which is um, controlled by a, a glucose monitor. So this continuous glucose monitor regulates the amount of sugar in a patient's blood and sends information to this insulin pump which is controlled, also controlled by this con uh, algorithm, which releases insulin when this says it needs it. Also, when um, a person has a schedule, they can set it to release f uh, insulin at a certain time, and which will become regular for that person's um, daily routine. So most artificial pancreas device systems consist of three types of a continuous glucose monitoring system, an insulin infusion pump, while a blood glucose device is uh, used to calibrate that machine. A computer-controlled algorithm then connects the CGM in the insulin infusion pump to allow continuous communication between the devices. Uh, sometimes an artificial pancreas device is also referred to as a closed-loop system or uh, an automated uh, insulin delivery system. Here's the pathway once again. In the subject, in this uh, diagram, uh, it is a uh, meal is t uh, taken in, and this whole glucose system follows this pathway. It uh, regulates it, and in such a way that it goes from the sensor model to the controller and to that subcutaneous insulin pump. So the implantable insulin delivery device features a gel that responds to changes in blood glucose levels. Uh, when the blood glucose levels are elevated, the gel enables a higher rate and vice versa. The implantable system can be refilled on a regular basis and um, yeah, just, this is a con it's just a continuous uh, blood monitoring system. So we covered a few things in this lecture. Um, in conclusion, we covered the common symptoms of hypo, uh, hypoglycemia, polyuria, polydipsia, and uh, sensory deprivation, such as numbness or blindness. We've covered the insulin protein, um, the responsible for glucose regulation. A healthy pancreas is that in, uh, insulin production pathway we uh, outlined with the picture, and the pathophysiology of type 1 diabetes. We covered that the autoimmune destruction of insulin screening beta cells is such that pathology. And the artificial pancreas is modern medicine's answer to this problem. It's a closed loop system which replaces pancreatic function.